what I'm excited about that is coming out in July, August, and September. Hi, my name is Jeanette, and I want to thank you for joining me on the channel Jane Reads. So today I am going to share the eight upcoming releases that are releasing in July, August, and September that I am excited to read at some point. <laughs> so the very first two books I'm going to mention come out on July the 2nd, and the first one is Meet Me at the Starlight by Rachel Houck. And this is a contemporary romance, most likely a dual timeline, maybe? I don't know. It is categorized as a contemporary romance on Goodreads, but a lot of hers tend to have a flashback, so we'll see. But really, I picked this up because it is by Rachel Houck, which is one of my favorite authors, and I just loved this cover when I saw it. So it says, 80s supermodel Harlow Hayes seeks solace in a quaint Florida beach town to hide and heal from a heartbreak that shattered her entire world. To her surprise, she encounters Matt Knight, a Hollywood A-lister with a bad boy reputation who is returned to his hometown to help his plucky grandmother, Tuesday, save her century-old skating rink, the Starlight. The Starlight holds a special place in the hearts of the community, once acting as a refuge for the Depression-era families and bringing the town together with gatherings and celebrations. Tuesday's determination and resilience even protected her beloved rink from her husband's shady business dealings. Yet, when the Starlight is threatened with demolition, Tuesday may not be able to save it. As Matt and Harlow plot with Tuesday to save the Starlight, they find themselves on a journey of surprises, self-discovery, and the kind of healing that leads to love. So I am going to guess we're going to be reminiscing some of the days back when this skating rink, yeah, skating rink, was kind of in its prime for the Depression era, but that is a total guess on my part. I do have an advanced reader copy of this through NetGalley, so I will be reading it very, very soon, if not at the very end of July or June, going into July. And I will share my thoughts. Okay, the second book that also releases July the 2nd is Until Our Time Comes by Nicole N. Miller. This is a historical fiction and it is by a debut author. So this is Nicole's very first book. And I saw it on NetGalley and I was like, that is such a pretty cover. Like the cover just drew me in. It's the horse, obviously. <laughs> okay, so it says, American horse trainer, Ada Kingston, I don't know how to say her name, <laughs> is living her dream of working at the famous, I don't know how to say this either, Janow Poldaski stables in Poland, where they breed the best Arabian horses in the world. But her plans to bring the priceless stallion Labur to the U.S. are derailed when the German army storms into a, her adopted country in 1939. Little does she know this is just the beginning of six long years of occupation that will threaten her beloved horses at every turn. Major Brett Conway is at the stables under the guise of a news reporter, but his true mission is intelligence gathering for the British. That and helping Ada stay safe. Which is harder and harder to do as she insists they must evacuate 250 horses to save them from being stolen, sold, or eaten by the invading forces. What follows will test their physical, mental, and emotional strength, as well as their faith in God, humankind, and each other. So historical fiction set during World War II, around the time of World War II, set in Poland at a stables. And Ada, Ada, I don't know how to say her name, is trying to save these horses. I am really intrigued about this one. And then on August the 6th is Between the Sound and Sea by Amanda Cox. This is contemporary, um, categorized as the women's fiction, and I've really enjoyed the one Amanda Cox book I've read, 
but I really want to read. I own another one on my shelves and I have her other one on my wish list. So she is one I kind of want to read more of. And this one just sounds really interesting. So every family has its secrets. Josina, Josefina wouldn't mind if her family still had a few of their own after a lawsuit tarnishes their name. When an opportunity opens to become a temporary keeper of a decommissioned lighthouse on a North Carolina island, she jumps at the chance to escape her small town and oversee its restoration. As the work begins, Joey discovers strange notes tucked inside the crevices of the old stone walls, pages torn from a lighthouse keeper's log signed by someone named May, who recounts harrowing rescues at sea. Fascinated by a woman lighthouse keeper, Joey digs into the past only to discover there's never been a record of a lighthouse keeper by that name. When things start to go amiss on the island, locals are convinced that it is the ghost of the lighthouse keeper and his daughter who were lost at sea during World War II. As Joey sifts through decades of rumors and legends and puts together the pieces of the past, what emerges is a love story, one that's not over yet. This just sounds really, really intriguing. And I just, I have a fascination with lighthouses. They're just so pretty on the shore of water. Like I just love them. And finding notes from an old lighthouse keeper's journal. Like, so we're going finding journal entries from the past. I am very intrigued about this one. On August the 13th, we have Beyond Ivy Walls by Rachel Fordham. I added this to my list because it's Rachel Fordham. And this cover is gorgeous. And then I read the description and I was like, oh, I want to read this one. So it says, Beauty and the Beast meets a light between oceans in historic small town America where a wealthy recluse, bachelor, and an unlikely ally, ally join forces to solve a family secret and inadvertently find belonging along the way. So I love Beauty and the Beast. Like that's kind of my, the Disney movie, my favorite Disney movie. And so like just taking that as a retelling, I'm intrigued. And then I read further. Early 1900s. When an accident leaves Sadie West's family in dire financial need, she nervously leaves the land she loves to work in a hogue, I don't know how to say that correctly, duster factory. But sending all her money homes means she has nowhere to board, and she's forced to take up residence in an abandoned building, a choice that throws her in the path of the town's mysterious bachelor. Recently returned from exile, and determined to keep his arrival a secret, Otis Taylor makes the impulsive decision to hire the woman he finds hiding on his family's property, with the strict instructions she tell no one he has returned. The dark halls of his boyhood flood him with memories he's longed to forget. The only bright light is the woman he's hired. Can the optimist Sadie teach the wounded Otis to trust again, to love? Can the pair unravel the family secrets that have long cast a shadow over the mansion and those who reside within? So we definitely have like kind of a, maybe a grumpy sunshine thing and wealthy and somebody struggling with finances. I, yes. And I do have an advanced reader copy of this one from Nat Galley. So I plan on reading this one in July before it releases. Okay, then also in August, on August the 20th, we have Target Acquired by Lynette Eason. This is book number two of her Lake City Heroes series. It is a romantic suspense, and I don't really wanna know a whole lot about this one because it is book number two, but I will read the first little part of the summary that tells us who it's about. And it says, Tough as nails, Kenzie King has finally earned her place as a tactical medic on a SWAT team, but not everyone on the all-male team accepts her. Rumor is she didn't get the position because of what she could do, 
but because of who she knew, which means she has to work harder and longer than anyone else to prove herself. So we are following Kenzie, who we did meet in book one. So I just want to know more. And because it is book two and romantic suspense, I love to go into these really kind of unknown of where the story is going to take me. So that is my plan. Okay, on September the 3rd, A Token of Love by Carrie Taransky is releasing. This is going to be a dual timeline and it says, In 1885 London, Lillian Fremont embarks on a treacherous journey to reunite with her long lost niece who was abandoned at the Fondling Hospital eight years ago. Fueled by her sister's plea and armed with a gold token that identifies her niece, Lillian teams up with investigative reporter Matthew McGarren to expose the grim reality of the shadow streets of London. As Lillian and Matthew unravel the mystery of Alice's disappearance, their partnership blossoms into one of shared purpose and undeniable attraction. In present-day London, Janelle Spencer finds herself unexpectedly running the Fondling Museum when filmmaker Jonas Conrad arrives to document the museum's history. Their collaboration takes a surprising turn as they uncover articles from the past that shed light on a haunting connection to the present. As Chanel becomes caught between exposing the truth and protecting the museum's reputation, she must decide if she can risk everything for love and justice. So it is set in London, which I love books set in England and in London in particular. And it's a dual timeline, which I have really come to enjoy. And it's by Carrie Taransky. Like, yeah. And I will be receiving an, uh, an advanced reader copy of this from the author. So I cannot wait to read this one. Okay, then we have another romantic suspense also releasing September the 3rd. And that is Lethal Standoff by Diane Mills. And I don't really know a lot about this book. But I read this little bit and it was like, okay, put this on my list. Justice can be elusive. Family secrets can be deadly. The stakes are high and the clock is ticking in a volatile criminal case filled with unanswered questions. And Carrington Reed is running short on time to piece together clues that will solve the puzzle. For fans of action-packed romantic suspense in the vein of Lynette Eason, Irene Hannon, and Danny Petrie. Three of my favorite authors for suspense. So yeah, please. So that is why I added this one to my list. I have read Diane Mills before, but she's kind of been a hit or miss, but I haven't read a lot of her newer stuff. So yeah, I'm intrigued. Okay, and the very last book also releases September the 3rd, and it is Meddling with Mistletoe by Liz Johnson. This is a Christmas romance. It is a novella, I think it's a novella length. It's just over 250 pages. And that's not normally my thing. But when I read this, it was like, <gasps> and I will tell you what that awe moment was. Okay. Whitney Garrett is preparing to enter culinary school in the spring. But first, she has to sell enough homemade pies at the local Christmas markets to pay her tuition. When her oven breaks, Whitney asks Marie Sloan, the proprietor of the Red Door Inn, if she can use the inn's kitchen to keep up with her orders. Marie agrees with a catch. Whitney has to watch the three Sloan children and cook breakfast for the Red Door in return. The inn is busy with holiday guests, including Aretha Franklin Sloan's perpetually single nephew, Daniel, and Ruby, a businesswoman in town to purchase Aretha's antique store. Intent on making a Christmas match for the two, Aretha enlists Whitney's help in her schemes. But the deeper Whitney gets, the more she realizes that Ruby is definitely not the right woman for Daniel, and the more she thinks that she just might be his perfect match. And the reason I was like, oh, is 
this is set at the Red Door Inn, which is a series, I think it's Prince Edward Island Dreams series, and the first book is The Red Door Inn, where we meet Marie Sloan, who is not Marie Sloan when we meet her in book one. So now this is like picking up kind of because we met her romance so this one is picking up from there so I'm like and I really enjoyed that series and every time Liz Johnson includes the Red Door Inn in any other book I'm like oh yes add that to my list so that is why this one got added to my list so these are the eight books that I am most excited about to read in the next quarter I will not get all of them read in the next three months but they will be on my to be read list. Some of them. I hope to at least get three of them read because I have advanced reader copies of three of them. So obviously I hope to get those three read and maybe I can get some more. We'll see. So I would love it if you would tell me in the comments below what books you're looking forward to in the next three months that are coming out. And if I haven't mentioned them, please leave them in the comment because maybe I just didn't see them. So I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video today and I hope you have a great day. Bye.